you don't already know. Uh, Jack Pettis bought a saxophone on Armistice Day, which next weekend I think will be 100 years ago. And uh, he bought it, I think he was 16 at the time. He and his friend were so excited, everyone was celebrating Armistice Day. And uh, he went and uh, they, they both, the two of them, each of them bought a saxophone. The next day his friend returned his, but Jack did not. He uh, went on to uh, be a professional musician. Um, he used to, at that time, he wasn't a professional musician. He was in, a, I think, a factory in an office job. And he used to wait until everyone had gone home. And then he'd get out of the saxophone and, and practice. Um, it paid off because very quickly he was working with very great bands like the New Orleans Rhythm Kings. Our first tune is one from them. It's called Angry. <laughs> So Pettis was very lucky uh, in 22 and 23 to be playing with these uh, wonderful New Orleans musicians, Leon Rapolo, Paul Maris, and uh, a bunch of other wonderful musos. Uh, but he did move on, uh, and with his C melody, he uh, recorded with other musicians like Phil Napoleon, New York musicians. And uh, if you haven't already noticed, I'm playing a C melody saxophone. It's uh, the model in between tenor and alto. Uh, you don't really play them very often. They're quite hard to play, they sort of uh, resist playing. <laughs> and in fact, Andy just said uh, they have a certain smell, and he can smell the smell. <laughs> Perhaps by the end of the concert, so shall you. Here's one from The Ambassadors. Uh, this one found uh, Jack Pettis in, in extremely uh, fine company. I think he had Mick Mole on trombone and Phil Napoleon. Uh, it's called The Throwdown Blues.
So Jack Pettis, our hero for the hour, uh, he joined the Ben Burney Orchestra. And uh, Ben Burney was a fine violinist and band leader. He'd just written a song. It uh, made something of a success of him. It was called Sweet Georgia Brown. And uh, he recorded this one in a, a film, actually. Uh, I think it's Vitaphone. I'm not sure if it's a... No, something else. Um, but uh, Ben Burney's band, you can see on, on uh, YouTube, if you look, uh, Ben Burney, Sweet Georgia Brown, you'll find uh, the first recorded video of someone playing a jazz saxophone solo, and it's Jack Pettis. Um, it's very hard to tell whether it's tenor or C melody he's playing. Actually, I think it's tenor, but uh, it doesn't really matter because even when he plays the tenor, he sounds just like he's playing the C melody. So uh, please forgive me. I couldn't fit another instrument up here. It's one sweet to Georgia Brown. So by now you're thinking, Jack Pettis has had a pretty successful career. Why is he forgotten? Who knows? He went to uh, New York and obviously he was with ben, ben Burney and then he had his own band which had the catchy title of Jack Pettis and His Pets. <laughs> Brilliant. And they recorded some wonderful records. This next one is Companionate Blues. And when you listen to these records you think, uh, how are these not better known? Uh, Companionate Blues? offers no signs of his later obscurity. Uh, we hope you'll think the same. <laughs>
Thank you. Companion Ace Blues. And uh, Dan Levinson doing a fantastic job of recreating the Benny Goodman solo on that record. Yeah. And so, as I was saying before, how did he become obscure? He was recording these uh, excellent tunes, which he wrote with the pianist, um, um, what was his name? Uh, not Herman Goring. Uh, <laughs> Al Goring, that's right. Yeah. He, he had a, a pianist friend playing in the Ben Burney band called Al Goring, and they co they wrote uh, co-wrote a lot of songs. These two together. I'm I'm not sure we should continue with this line of joke. Um, so Companion Eight Blues, another one from this era. Um, this one had another fine clarinet player on it. I think it was Don Murray. Uh, it's called Hot Heels. Another another of their songs, actually, written by Goring and Pettis. Here's another one from the Pets, before we move on to a different band, and I have a, a surprise band name in store for you. But how about a hand for this brass team uh, working very hard through these charts. On the trombone, Adrian Fry. And again on the corner, Andy. This one's called Broadway Stomp. I thought it was a good one to include. Um, I'm sure it's about New York or something. Uh, but I live at Tooting Broadway, so uh, this, this one goes out to South London. <laughs> Yet another co a song, composition of um, Al Goring and Jack Pettis. So they were really uh, doing a lot of work, these guys, together. Um, and uh, once again, I'm trying to uh, warn you that these are men who should be successful and well-known now. Why won't they want to follow? <laughs> Thank you. 
I suppose you're in a, a fit of suspense wondering what I'm going to say about why Jack Pettis was neglected. Uh, you're going to have to wait a little longer. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to do something a little naughty. I hope uh, Klaus and Keith uh, aren't too close by because uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. We're playing a song now that's not actually a Pettis related tune. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This one goes way back to another saxophone player. In 22 he died. Uh, Lauren McMurray. And he is so obscure that you'll never even see a set about him at this festival. <laughs> This one's called Blue, and it was recorded by, uh, uh, what was it, uh, McMurray's California Thumpers. Um, and you will hear um, a slightly earlier style of jazz, um, and McMurray, Lauren McMurray, was a wonderful player who unfortunately died that year, in 22. Um, he had a, a simple infection in his nose uh, that obviously would have been quite easily cured if he'd lived into the anti antibiotic age. Uh, he did not, uh, and we're going to remember him now. Lauren McMurray's Blue. If you like your obscure jazz, and you do because you're here, go home and look up Lauren McMurray and you'll find very little about him. <laughs> so, with Ben Burney in 1928, uh, Jack Pettis recorded this masterpiece. It's a very sentimental old song called When Polly Walks Through the Hollyhocks. <laughs> and uh, it's a lovely melody uh, with absolutely shocking lyrics. We will leave. Well, we'll consign them to history and uh, give you the, the rest of the performance. Uh, they did a, a vocal take, and uh, for non-English speaking audiences, uh, one with a trumpet and trombone duet. So we'll do that one for you instead. When Polly Walks Through the Hollyhocks. <laughs> Thank you. 
transcribing that one and my headphones on listening to every note and there was one particular moment towards the end uh, during a bridge where Jack Pettis is playing a solo you can hear one of the other musicians in the band who knows who um, yelling out encouragement saying yeah yeah man or something like that and it, it tells me this even though that's a silly old song called when Polly walks through the hollyhocks you guys knew they were playing hot jazz and, uh, it's important to remember that um, so now towards 1930 and towards the end of Jack Pettis's you know, golden moments. Uh, he did play throughout the 40s. Uh, he even had a band shortly after, after 1930, about 1931, called Jack Pettis and his Investors Syndicate Serenaders. <laughs> He's starting to wonder why he might have uh, gone nowhere after that. Uh, I, think, I think he was hit by playing an, an unpopular instrument. The C melody sax, and even when he played the T melody, the, the tenor, he sounded like he was playing a C melody. He was also hit by the Depression, uh, and he was hit by um, a style of music that was really going out of fashion and he couldn't really adapt. But we're not quite there yet. In 1930, with uh, Irving Mills' Hotsy Totsy Gang, um, people like Benny Goodman again, Jack Teagarden, the Dorsey Brothers, all these people on these records, he recorded a tune called Crazy About My Gal. Yet again, one of his compositions.
time to play one more tune. This is Freshman Hop, and uh, another of Jack's compositions, and recorded with him and his uh, pets. So we're going back to 28, but that's okay with you. This one they, they liked so much they recorded it four times for four different record labels. And um, I think there might have been another reason other than liking the tune so much that they get uh, the royalties, of course. Um, so Freshman Hop is going to feature just about everyone uh, at some point or other. Adrian Fry on the trombone. <laughs> Andrew Sharp on the trombone. Nicole on the drums. <laughs> Phil Rutherford on the tuba. Jakob Ulberger on the banjo. Ronald Kenner Larson on the piano. The one with Dan Levinson on the current and saxophones. We hope you've enjoyed our Pettis set. Why was he forgotten? There isn't one single interesting, kind of uh, memorable and correct answer. Uh, we don't really know. However, we do know that he gave up music in the 40s, lived a few years later. Um, he was, he, he died without much money, but um, there is now a marker with, uh, you know, on his grave that didn't exist when he died. Um, and um, it says, uh, Jack Pettis, Bugle Call Blues, which was one of his compositions. Um, so he is remembered. We get to play it, we get to listen to it, and uh, you can always listen to the records on YouTube. Freshman Hop!